Hello class, today we'll be talking about the fragments of Papios and who authored it, who what it entails, um, when it was dated, things of that sort. And so I'm gonna jump right in. Um, the fragments of Papios were authored by Papios, and we know that one by the title, and then two by people who use the fragments of Papios. And so we can start out by saying Irenaeus and Eusebius, two well-known theologians who use the fragments of Papios in their own writings, and um, they attribute it to him. And and so. Um, we can start by saying that. We know that uh, when going to dating, we know that it was dated in between somewhere as early as 90 AD to as far as 150 AD. And we know this because um, we know it's in between that time because we know that one, Papias was uh, known to either have been a disciple of John or a hearer of John, somebody that was close or nearby to him. Um, and so we, we can we can say that 90 AD isn't far-fetched because we do not know exactly when John did uh, or died. And so, um, and then we have Polycarp, who we also know that for sure that Papias was close friends or a close companion with Polycarp. And so when Polycarp dies around uh, mid second century, we know that uh, Papias must have written in between that time to have been um, close friends with Polycarp. And so, um, we have a, a from Holmes textbook. We have a quote that kind of affirms this. Um, it actually happens to be the very first fragment um, in the book, and it says, "Irenaeus and others record that John, the theologian and apostle, survived until the time of Trajan. After this, Papias of Hierapolis and Polycarp, bishop of Smyrna, both of whom had heard him, became well known." And so, we see that um, even in the in the fragments, it speaks about Polycarp and being his companion. And also about um, him knowing John or being near to John, um, and that kind of being something that actually starts off when they begin to become known. Um, we can also say that Papias never affirms his uh, relation with any of the apostles, and so while many do believe that he could have been around as early as that, that um, it was never fully affirmed. Um, we also have a. a a quote from the Jeffers textbook, which says um, that the fragments contain the bishop's own collection of saying and events from the life of Jesus of Nazareth that circulated throughout the churches of Asia Minor and Syria prior to this time. And so we know how or um, what the book contains. We, However, we do not know exactly why it was written. And so um, we do see that he, uh, he contains or... Um, preserves teachings of teachers that he, he affirms and knows well, um, but we do not know exactly why these are written. And so um, a few closing things that the fragments of Papias uh, contain, we can say that um, it has different renditions of uh, stories in the Bible that we know um, two of the primary ones or um, that we can say are um, the woman called adultery, which puts a little spin on it and is is seen from a different light. And then um, the um, Judas, the death of Judas Iscariot. And so uh, both of those are, are stories that uh, the fragments of Papias talks about and um, pushes or it has a different spin on it than what we know as canon. And so um, uh, one more thing that is major in his fragments is uh, the stance that he takes on the authorship. Um, a few of these things before I even did any research on Papias, I did not know where this came from. But one thing that I knew or believed is that Mark um, or Mark's gospel was him um, listening to Peter and him writing it out and that being the, the gospel. And so that's what I became to understand that. And I didn't know that it came from Papias, but um, that is what Papias taught about Mark, the book of Mark. And this is also he taught that the book of uh Matthew was Matthew writing Jesus' teachings in Hebrew for anybody who knew Hebrew or wanted to read it. Um, and so we know these things. And these are things that um, that the fragments of Papias uh, contain. And then in closing, we can also say that um, he, he heavily affirms uh, apostolic tradition and oral testimony. And so these are some things about the fragments of Papias. And they are very interesting and very well worth a read. And so thank you all for coming to class.